worship. Also, songs we've sung are just uh, so good to be here. And uh, the message this morning, I want to continue in the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, we're going to look here in Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to read verses 7 to 11 this morning. These verses are talking about asking, seeking, and knocking. And um, talking about prayer and receiving from the Lord. So let's read these verses, Matthew 7, verse 7. Asking it will be given to you, seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you, then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him? Let's pray. Father, we come to you here this morning we want to first we want to just exalt your name in the name of Jesus this morning and thank you for your love and your mercy to us and I just thank you also for your word that we have read here this morning and I just pray that you would give revelation and uh, just help us as we look at these verses Lord to apply them to our hearts and, and I pray that there would be faith renewed in our lives uh, faith that you are a loving father, a good father, a father who gives good things to his children. Uh, and that that we would see that in these verses. And I, and I just pray, help us, help me as I speak, give me words. And I pray that your name would be glorified in Jesus' name. Pray. Amen. Amen. Well, first of all, a little bit of time looking at the context. I think very often uh, as preachers when these verses are, uh, are used we as preachers we use them as part of a subject on prayer and we'll we probably often take these verses and take them out of the Sermon on the Mount and just apply them to a topic of prayer which is fine but one advantage we have of going through the Sermon on the Mount as we have been, is we see the setting that, the context that these verses are in. Why in this Sermon on the Mount did Jesus bring this out at this point? And what did, what did the previous verses have to do with this? And so I'd like to just bring our minds to that Mount. Um, we see that it's he's been, it's quite a, a list of things. There's been, he's been pointing out uh, standards of behavior, qualities that should be in our lives. Uh, how we should be inside, not just uh, the external things that come out. He's been talking about motives. He's been talking about how we relate to riches and material things. And then just here in chapter 7, he's been talking about how we relate to other people and their faults versus our faults. And and being able to see our own failures, dealing with those before we try to help other people. And now he comes to these verses and he says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. And so the point that I get out of this is, you know, we could take the Sermon on the Mount and we could make an Old Testament law out of that. And we could come up with all these points of, okay, now this is all the things that we need to do. And we could make it a legalistic thing. But that's not the point of the Sermon on the Mount because he over and over points to it has to start in your heart. It's not just doing the outward thing. It's not, it, and so it, the point of the Sermon on the Mount is not to just 
for each of us to decide, I'm going to be more determined. I'm going to have more willpower. I'm going to make sure that I get it right. But the point of the Sermon on the Mount is to realize that unless there's a change in my heart, I'll never be able to, to, to live up to this. I need help. And that's why when you go back to chapter 5 at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, what's the very first verse? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. And that, you could say, that's a theme all the way through. This, and why are they blessed? Because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you're poor in spirit, you realize, I don't have what it takes. I'm going to need help. I can't do this. And so here we come now in chapter 7, and we're approaching the end of the sermon. And Jesus now says, if, if you're in this condition where you see as we've been going through these messages, and you say, I just, I, I cannot measure up to this. It's just, I, I see I'm short here, I'm short here. Here is your answer. Yes. Here is where you will find how to attain to this standard. It is in asking. It's in getting help from, from, the, from God. It's not in more willpower. It's not in more determination. It's not in... in making a list and checking it twice. But it's in, in a, a relationship with the Father, asking Him, and then He supplies. So that's the context. This is how we receive God's strength, His wisdom, the fruit that we want to see in our lives. It's in this. And then the other thing that I wanted to just touch on, because it's really where... Uh, my heart was drawn as I studied on this um, is I want to, to reach out to you and I think many of us probably are in this spot where we realize that um, we look at these verses and maybe our first instinct is to say well I've tried that and it just doesn't seem right work for me. Sometimes it works, but there's other times it doesn't work. And I'm, I'm, I'm and we, we begin to become uh, cynical, or we begin to question whether we, it, it just doesn't seem like I don't understand these verses, because it says here that if we ask, we'll receive, and if we seek, we'll find, if we knock, it'll be open. But sometimes I ask and I'm not receiving. And so, and I think we all deal with that, if we're honest. There's times we, it's, wow, okay, that prayer was answered and it's great. But then there's other times when we're asking and it just seems like the answer's not coming. And so we go down the list of what could it be? Is, our, is there sin in my life? Because as we look at Scripture, there's reasons given why prayers aren't answered. And, and here's some of them. If there's sin in your life, if there's sin, God won't hear you. If there's something blocking your relationship with God. So we look at that and we say, well, I think everything's okay there. We go to the next one. Is it according to God's will? We have that earlier in the Sermon on the Mount. And, and asking according to His will. Well, is it His will? Well, yeah, this is His will. I know this is his will. Um, so we go to the next one. Well, is, is my motive right? Because it says that if we ask with the wrong motives, uh, he won't hear us. So is my motive right? Or is there pride in my heart? Do I just want to get an answer so that people look up to me? And they say, wow, he really got an answer on that one. Is, is my motive right? Or is it selfish? And we say, well, yeah, my motive's good. And we could add the one this morning with JB's discussion. Am I living with my wife in an understanding way? Now here's another one. Well, you could check that one off, man. Make sure that one's right, because it says if you don't, if not, your prayers could be hindered. All these reasons, and often we come and we say, it, it seems like I'm, I, I don't know why the reason is. And then there's one more. And this one, I think, is where often we get hung up on and we say, well, it must be this one. Do we have enough faith? 
we have enough faith. Well, how do you determine that? So it, it, we say, well, it must be this. It must be I just don't have enough faith. And, and so then that sends us in a spiral. And then what happens? We stop asking, we stop seeking, we stop knocking. And so my heart to you today is if you're in that spot today, or if you're tempted to go there, that this will give you courage, this message. Um, and I hope you get some answers uh, as we go through here, because that's really my heart. Because as I see this, it's saying that we should be asking, we should be seeking, we should be not. And so if we've given up, there's a problem. And I want to give you courage today that you would, again, start asking, seeking, and not. So we begin with asking. Um, to ask, of course, is we use our tongue. We, we use our, our mouth and we speak. And it says, ask and it will be given to you. Who asks? You know, if you, who asks for help? It's people that are helpless. People that know that they need help. Beggars. And here in the Sermon on the Mount, who are in spirit. Those are people who ask. People who think they don't need help, that they have it all together, don't ask. But it's people who know they need help that ask. And five times in these five verses, he says ask. Or the word ask or asks is, is uh, mentioned. I think once in every verse, if I'm not mistaken. Over and over, we're told to ask. And not only in these verses, but throughout Scripture, we're told over and over, ask, ask. Uh, one of the reasons we don't receive in James chapter 4, we don't have because we don't ask. If we're not asking, very likely we're not going to receive. God wants us to ask. And then the second one is to seek. Now, if you're seeking something, there's it's more than just words. Now there's there's a desire. There's a it's an it's a it's words plus seeking. How do you seek? In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. So we seek with our heart. That's where it begins, in our heart. It's not only our words, but it's our heart. Our heart is involved and our desire. Um, we're seeking, and we're seeking what? Well, we're seeking an answer to what we're praying for, whatever that may be. Maybe it's, it's a... a victory over a temptation that we have, or maybe it's a, a, a godly virtue that we know we need more of in our life, or maybe it's we're praying for someone else. We're seeking that, but ultimately, above even that, we're seeking God, because again, we know that that's where our help's coming from. If there's going to be an answer to the prayer, it's coming from God, so we're seeking Him. We're seeking for him to intervene in our situation. And then we have knock. And knocking adds another step to the seeking. Now you have seeking, when you really seek something, it leads to knocking. It, it leads to an action. Knocking, of course, physical knocking is we use our fist, we use our hand, and we knock on the door. How do we knock spiritually? Well, first of all, we need to acknowledge that there's something in the way. If there's, if, if there's nothing blocking 
our path, there's nothing to knock on. So if we're knocking on something, we're seeking for something and then we knock on something, it's because there's an obstruction there. There's something blocking where we want to go or what we want to receive. And so I think that is a very important thing, acknowledging that, that there's a door there. And we need to get through that. Somehow that door needs to open. And you know, when, when we knock on a door, normally the reason we knock on a door is because we can't open it. It needs to be open from the other side. If, 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 we, if we could open it ourselves, we would not. But we're knocking so that someone else will open that door for us and allow us through. And so again, we're knocking. Who are we knocking? We're knocking on that obstruction, but we're also in a way where we're asking God, God, open this door. Open this obstruction. And I like to picture it as knocking on the door of heaven's throne. We know that behind that door is everything we need. When God intervenes in his storehouse of Everything that he has, all our needs, all our, what we're asking for will be met. So we know. So we ask, we seek, and we know. And when you look at these words in the original, you, you see that they are in the present imperative tense. When what that means is it's a when something is in present tense, it means it's an it's you're doing it right now, and it's an it's in other words, it gives the idea of it's an ongoing thing. So you could say, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. I think that's a a good uh, literal translation of the meaning. The way I see it is, and, 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 and really, when you just read it at first glance, it's maybe the exact opposite of the impression that you get. It kind of seems like asking, it's, it will be given you. Seeking, you will find. Knocking, it will be opened. And you, get the, uh, you can get the impression of, a, of a, a heavily vending machine, and you just hit the three buttons, and out pops your answer, and off you go on your merry way. But when you look at this, it gives the idea of a continual asking, seeking, knocking. It's not just a one-time thing. And I believe, as, as a Christian, this is our life. This is what our life is like. Will we ever get to the point where we don't need to ask, seek, knock once we get to heaven? But while we're here, this is our life. This is our life. Asking, seeking, knocking. For God to meet the needs of our life. Because it's, it's not in our own strength. It's in His strength. So we need persistence, perseverance, endurance, Hebrews 10 verse 36 says, For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. Galatians 6 9 says, Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. And uh, I think last Sunday, Wayne, in Wayne's message, a good example of this was the Syrophene. Syrophoenician woman that Wayne brought out, how that you know she could have easily given up because Jesus said that it's not for you. It's 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 and basically said called her a dog. That it's not for the dogs. It's for other people. And but she didn't give up. She persisted and she said yes. But even dogs eat crumbs, and that's all I need is a crumb for me, and that will meet my need. And she persisted and she received the answer.
Sometimes the easiest thing to do is to stop asking, to stop seeking, to stop knocking. Because it's, how would you say, the more, it, it can be painful, it can hurt not to, to continue, your heart is in this, you want what's right, and you keep asking, you keep seeking, you keep knocking, and it just seems like there's no answer coming. What's the easiest thing to do is just to kind of let it lay. Uh, and I was reminded of that. There's a verse in, in Proverbs 24, 16. A righteous man falls seven times and rises again. What does, what does that mean? What is righteous about a man falling seven times? It's because he, every time he gets back up. After one or two times, what would be the easy thing to do is just give up, lay there. Because it's not fun to get back up and then get knocked down again. That's not fun, that's painful. And so, I wasn't going to use another baseball now. But this one was just, it happened this week, and it was too, it's too fitting. It really brings out how it's painful to fail. And maybe fail is the wrong word. In our asking, not to receive the answer that we're looking for. It's not failing. But it's, we're not receiving that answer. So, Jefferson's baseball team has went through a tough time in the last two weeks. They lost, believe it or not, seven games in a row. They fell seven times. And you know, after the seventh one, when he came home that night, he was frustrated. And he said something like, something's going to have to change. Either we're going to have to start winning, or I'm going to quit trying to win so hard. Why? Because it hurts. The more you are invested in it, the more you have given up other things, the more you have put into it, the painful, more painful it is to lose, to not receive. And so what happens in our spiritual lives when that happens? We become cynical and we say, well, if God wants to answer, he'll answer, and if he doesn't, he doesn't, and and we just kind of let it lay and we go about our other things and we just say, I tried it, it didn't work. But these verses say, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking, don't give up, get back up. And uh, we met here a couple nights ago, the elders and deacons, we had a meeting and it came up about how that in, uh, in our society, it seems like there's a lot of kind of laziness, lethargic people that we just don't have a lot of, uh, that it just wants to set in on people. Like, well, this is just how it is. And, but you know, and there was an example brought up of someone who's, do, who's doing something about it. Like, I'm gonna step out in faith and I'm gonna, do some things to change some things in my life. Not just accept this is just how it's going to be and, you know, but actually doing something about it. Not the seeking, asking, and not giving up. Persevering. So I want to encourage us to get back up. Keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep knocking. And what keeps us from, from doing these things? We all want to pray more. What keeps us from doing it? And, um, and I think one that is brought out here is, is 
when we're not receiving what we thought we would. Here in verses 9 and 10, it brings the example out of an earthly, uh, earthly parents and how we would not give uh, what's bad to our children, but we want to give good to them. So it says, What man is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? You know, and, and isn't that how it feels sometimes to us? Why does he bring that out? Because sometimes in our lives, it seems like what God is giving us is not that bread that we asked for. It's not the fish that we asked for, but it's just, it's not, we're not seeing that result that we, we thought he would give. But he's reassuring us here and saying that you don't don't be don't be deceived. God really does care about you, and He will give you good, even though it may not appear that way. He says, "If, if that's how you, as as earthly parents who are, it says, being evil in comparison to God." If that's how you treat your children, you, you wouldn't do that to your children. God's not going to do that to, to you as well. And so sometimes uh, our picture of God, we need to see God as a father who loves us. Who really, even though at times we don't understand, we, we don't understand why is the answer not coming when we thought it would. Why is it or is it coming in a different way than what we thought? Over and over in the in the Sermon on the Mount, we have God, uh, Jesus referring to God as our Father. Your Father sees what you do in secret. Your Father knows what you need before you ask. Your Father in heaven. Your Father knows you need all these things. Your Father gives good to his children. And so we need to see God as a loving father, a father who gives us good. If, if you think back to your childhood, or some of you are in your childhood, and maybe you have two parents, and most likely one is more likely to give when you ask than the other. So who are you more likely to go to to ask? You know, I know. When I grew up, if I I didn't ask my dad for a lot of things. I knew he loved me, but my mom loved me in a different way. She was much more giving than my dad was. So I didn't even bother asking dad for a lot. But I asked my mom, and she would give if she at all could. She was a very giving woman. And, I, and what I want us to see is that God is that type of God. He is a God who gives, loves to give, and wants to give what's really good for you. In the end, and at times again, it's going to take faith on our part to, to believe that even though it doesn't appear that way sometimes, what I think would be good, and it's not happening right now, in the end, it's going to work out for my good. You know, God could answer every prayer immediately. He absolutely could. But he chooses not to. I, I try to think how that would be if every time that we ask for something, God would just like that give it to us. Good, like, good things. Like, spiritual qualities in our lives, things that, you know, we struggle with, at times we struggle with, take for instance, anxiety, you know, that was talked about here at the end of chapter 6, don't worry about things, and just, you know, trust God more, don't, he's got to take care of you, well, some, you know, people can, at times, they, they struggle with that for a long time, what if, why doesn't God just, when, when we pray and say, God, I know I have this issue with anxiety. 
and I want to trust you more. I want to have peace. I want to be calm about things. And he would just answer like that. And that would be over. He would not have that struggle anymore. What would that be like? We think, well, that'd be great. But evidently, God sees it differently. Because there's things in my life that that, that doesn't happen. Like, I continue to struggle with some things. Maybe I'm the only one. But probably you are similar to me. And there's things that you, you grow in. And it takes time. And it's a process. But it's it reminds me of the discussion that we had last Sunday. When John led the discussion, I believe it was last Sunday, about... And the last several, I think, about excellence and perfection. And perfection looks at that goal of that's all it's in, interested in is the end result of being calm and having total faith and, and no worry. And excellence is the path that gets there. And it's in that path that God works in our life. We get so focused on the end result, but it's in the it's in the struggle. It's in the being poor in spirit and calling out to God. There's value in even that. In calling out to God, crying out to God, being needy. It's okay to be needy. We are needy. To know our need and to know who can supply our need. In the parallel scripture in Luke, in Luke chapter 11, I'm just going to read those. Uh, it, it's very similar, but slightly different. Um, Luke 11, verses 9 to 13. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Now suppose one of you fathers is asked by his son for a fish. He will not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he is asked for an egg, he will not give him a scorpion, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And that's the main difference that I see is that phrase right at the end, where Luke, instead of saying, give what's good to those who ask him, Luke says, give the Holy Spirit. To those who ask me. So you want to know what's good? You know what you want to know what the good things are that God wants to give? He wants to give you the Holy Spirit. And and I hope that through this message it encourages us all to cry out to him for more of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit in our life. Lord, pour out your spirit on us, anoint our lives with the Holy Spirit. Baptize us in the Holy Spirit. Ask Him for that. Seek for that. Knock, for, knock on the door for that. Uh, in closing, I want to turn to another scripture. I just uh, in Mark chapter 4, verse 26 to 29. I came across these verses just uh, recently, and you know how it is sometimes when you read verses that you've read many times, but they just jump out at you in a new way, and that happened to me on this, and I think it fits in with this message. It's a parable, it's called the parable of the seed, but it's not the parable of the soils or the, the, the man who went out and sowed the seed on the like four different soil types, it's not that. It's a little different, and I believe this is the only place that this parable is, is listed. And it's here in, in Mark chapter 4, verse 26. And he was saying, The kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil. And he goes to bed at night, and he gets up by day, and the seed sprouts and grows. How he himself does not know. The soil produces crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, and then the mature grain in the head. But when the crop permits, he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. I just love this. It says this is what the kingdom of God is like. It's like a man, and he puts seed out on the soil. 
And then he goes to bed at night and he gets up by day. Now, I think you can see some balance in that. It doesn't say that he just went to bed and slept night and day until God woke him and it was time for the harvest. But he also wasn't so anxious that he couldn't sleep at night. He left it in God's hands. At night he went to bed. At day he got up. It doesn't say what he did during the day. But one thing we know is he didn't make the seed grow. Because it even says that he didn't even know how it grew. It says he himself did not know how it grew. But it grew. This seed that was sown grew. It sprouted. It grew. And it says in verse 28 that the soil produced crops by itself. First the blade, then the head, and then the mature grain. There's a process that happened here. It talks about the seed sprouting and growing and then producing a blade and then a head and then the mature grain. That took a process. There was a process of time there. It didn't happen immediately. But it grew and the man didn't even know how it grew. And then Finally, you have a mature crop. And it says, when the crop permits, he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest is come. He goes out and he cuts that crop. He harvests that crop. And isn't that so much what it's like in our Christian lives? It says this is what the kingdom of God is like. We ask, we seek, we knock. And things begin to grow in our life. It doesn't happen always immediately. There's not an immediate harvest. But things change. As we see, as we ask, as we see, as we knock, God works. God does things and, and we look back and we say, how did that happen? How did that change? I see that's changing. There's something changing in my heart. Things are different than they used to be. And finally, it's the man went out and harvested the crop. What, what does that mean? Well, when you harvest something, you, you take it and you use it for your benefit. There's a benefit in that harvest. You, it's, it's yours. It's your harvest. And so that's my prayer for all of us, for me and for you. And I think when you look back in your life, you can point to things in your life and you can say, you know, that happened in my life. Things changed in my life. Things aren't the way they used to be. But you know, so often our focus is on the things that haven't changed yet. The things that we've asked for, the things that we've been seeking and knocking, maybe they haven't changed like we thought. But keep seeking, keep asking, keep knocking, and let God do His work. It, you don't have to know how it grows. You don't have to. That's God's job. But our job is to ask, to see, to know. So don't give up. I know it's it's painful at times when you don't receive. It can be tiring. But remember, God is a good God. His ways are above our ways. Don't give up. Keep asking. Keep seeking. Keep seeking the Holy Spirit. Keep seeking for more of His filling in your life.